Hello, this is Thomas Adrianson with NCSI. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to set up the new Advanced Mail Monitor feature that was introduced in the 2022.3 update. This feature will enable you to process incoming emails to create or modify a business object record using quick actions based on the contents of an email. The standard processor only works with incidents, and in order to work with other business objects, you previously needed to configure the XSLT and XML files, which could be very complex. Or, if you wanted to route an incident to a specific team based on some criteria that's in the email, you would have to set up a workflow to route those and run that on every new incident. The Advanced Mail Monitor simplifies this process and adds increased flexibility to add new monitors quickly. For this demonstration, you're going to need administrator access to Neurons for ITSM. So once you've logged in as an administrator, we're going to click More and we're going to go to our Email Config workspace. You can also access this from the back end, uh, but you can do it from the front end if you'd like. <clears throat> on our email configuration screen, we're going to click on our outgoing server. And from here, we're going to see new options down here uh, called Attach Conversation ID to Outgoing Email. We're going to click this and we're going to see two options appear dynamically, a Conversation ID location and a Conversation ID prefix. The conversation ID can be placed in either the body or the subject. Best practice is to place this in the body, but you can put it in the subject if you prefer. The conversation prefix ID is anything that you would like this to be. Uh, I put combo dash here, but you could do CID number uh, if you wanted to. Uh, and that's all you need to do for the outgoing server. Once we save that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to our inbox and we're going to hit go to. This is going to open up the inbox workspace for that. And what we're going to do is we are going to select the advanced monitoring for the email processor. Typically, out of the box, this is set to incident, which is why it only works for incident. Uh, or if you set up the XML files, you would usually have this. But the advanced mail monitoring is going to replace that. If you've selected that, at the bottom of the screen, you're going to have a collection down here called monitor items. And for this example, we're going to set up five quick options. We're going to set up a create event if you want to do event monitoring, an update inverse, uh, incident based on conversation, an update service request based on conversation, a complete task based on conversation, and a create incident, which is going to be the last one, uh, the last option there to catch anything that didn't get uh, run by these above it. Uh, based on the conversation, is going to be using that conversation ID that we've embedded in the outgoing email. This is going to replace the incident hashtag, service request hashtag, change hashtag that's usually in the subject line that the email processor needs to identify what record to attach these to. Uh, instead, we're going to be using those conversation IDs instead. So that's going to free up your subject line. So you're going to create new inbox monitor items. And we're going to go ahead and set some of these up. So the first one we're going to want to do is our event monitoring. So we want events to come into the same mailbox that our uh, users are submitting to for incidents, but we don't want them to create incidents. We want them to create events. So we'll give it a name. We'll give it an execution order. I like to do these in uh, increments of 10. That way, if I have to come in and put in a new monitor item between two items, I don't have to renumber everything beneath it. We're going to use the internal business object name. Uh, and this can be gotten, if you look at the in actual business object, uh, if we were to look at event, you can see that it's up here, right? FRS underscore EBT underscore event. So that's what you're going to want to use here, as well as down here in the, in the eventual action. Uh, in the conditions, we're going to specify that we want to say any email that's coming from this specific address. So say you've got your SolarWinds alerts coming from SolarWinds at whatever company.com. Uh, you can put that in there and anything with that email address is now going to go to the event business object and it's going to run a quick action that we've created called a create event action. So if we look at our event quick actions, we can see our create event quick action. And we are pre-filling some values here. So our status is open, our source is network monitor. Uh, and then these ones uh, on the functions, we're going to be using some new out of the box uh, functions. Uh, default functions that we can just grab that information from. So what you'll see in our new functions is if you expand those, you now have a section for email functions that you can come in and use uh, right out of the box. So uh, these will really help you to uh, get that information quickly. 
If you wanted to get certain information out of an email that is formatted the same way every time, such as a SolarWinds uh, notice alert, you can come in here and you can combine that with some string after, uh, some trim, uh, and grab. So say, for instance, I have the name of the CI after uh, you know, a CI hashtag. I can use this to trim that information out and then set that so I'm only pulling that information uh, that is relevant. So once we've created that, we can go ahead and save it, and then we can continue to add additional monitor items until we have everything that we want. So for an update incident conversation, we're going to come in uh, and we're going to say, okay, this one's going to run next. I want to look for an existing incident uh, based on the conversation ID. And so this is going to look for that conversation ID that was embedded in the outgoing email, and it's then going to process it. We don't need to specify anything else, any actions or anything for that. Uh, it will append that email to an existing record uh, the same way that it previously did. The increased flexibility is going to come in when we want to start working with other business objects outside of incident. So in, for service request, we'll do the same exact thing, except we're going to be pointing it at the service rec business object. On a complete task, we're still going to want to find an existing record, but we're going to want to run an action against that. So if they uh, send an email that says, hey, we want uh, you send a, in the keyword of complete uh, on a task email. We want to run on task assignment the complete task action, which will just set the status to complete. And then finally, at the very end, I usually order this 99 or 999 or however many you have. Uh, and the last one this is going to be your catch all. So this is going to be the actual incident creation. Um, so we will, I don't believe you need these because we're already looking for the existing. Uh, but we're just going to run an incident and a create incident action. So if we look at that create incident action, you'll see that we're setting the status, the source, the service, the team, the owner. Uh, all of this can be set uh, how you want it to be set. If it can, if you wanted to set up, oh, hey, based on uh, this contents in the body that says their location is in uh, Europe, we want to route that to our uh, EMEA team. We can now, instead of assigning that to the service desk team, we can assign that to the EMEA service desk team, uh, so on and so forth. So that particular one would be a create incident uh, that gets put above uh, this catch-all create incident that just goes to your service desk. So you want to create all the different monitor items. Sorry, this is a lab environment, which is why we got that. So you'll create as many different monitor items as you want. This can be done on any number of inboxes if you have multiple inboxes, and then you're going to save those. And that's just a couple of quick examples to get you started with the advanced mail monitor feature. If you have any questions or would like any help setting this up, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can reach us through our website at ncsi.us. Thanks for watching.